Salutations everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Ghostmaster. And what an amazing episode it is. We are just before the final mission of the game in the epilogue. But before we do that, there's a little something to show you. Earlier on, we actually had a small brief look through of an epitaph from one of our ghostly friends. And they all have their own little quaint little stories. And so, I feel as if it's the proper time to go through everything that we see here and just see what our ghostly friends have to offer, shall we? What are your tales? I think the only one that's immune to this is the Darkling, because I don't think the Darkling actually has a place for this, in which case I'll just pop into a mission where he shows up. But for those who don't want to even sit and listen to me read this entire time, this episode's going to be entirely reading based. So let's go, shall we? Starting with Trisha. The hapless cheerleader died from an overly ambitious pyramid formation, but still remains optimistic about life. Or unlife at that. Oh yes, and their ha levels of house broken and otherwise refer to the number of orders they could possibly get. For those who are always who wonder about the things they see here. Fetters should be obvious. But let's move on to Hypnos, the weird horse. Not every ghost was once of flesh and blood. Hypnos used to be a dream until the dreamer died was sleeping. Their type of sandman also refers to what they're able to bind to normally. Electrospasm. Glorious ghostly friend. The part of Electrospasm, which was once Harold Schmier's murderer, was all but burned from up him upon the electric chair. All that's left is a polite, apologetic spirit of punishment. A wraith. Interesting. Static. Static never chose to be an electrician in life, instead following his aptitude wherever they would take him. Aptitudes wherever they would take him. He continues to go with the flow after his death, enjoying unlife as it comes. Another wraith. Clatterclaws. Clatterclaws is a haunter, much in demand. For some reason, many mortals seem unnaturally afraid of living spiders, let alone living dead ones. Buck. Old man Carter's faithful hound refused to let death separate him from his mortal friend. Similarly, Buck's generous cargo of fleas refused to let death separate them from his matted fur. Lady Rose, one we have never seen. A mysterious cultured fetch, Lady Rose believes in etiquette, abo etiquette above all else, and so politely refuses to reveal the details of her sordid past. Well, it would be nice. What powers do you have? You have Trojan Gift. Interesting. How very interesting. And you'd actually probably be good as a sanity-shattering ghost if we ever actually had to make use of you. <sighs> Terrorize. So we can actually click on you. Mortal children play a gruesome game at Halloween, passing objects to one another blindfolded. Peeled grapes become a dead man's eyes. Well, children, these are a dead man's eyes. Maxine Factor. Maxine, a vendor of cosmetics in life, is one of many entities to find relief in undeath. She was overjoyed to discover that ectoplasm doesn't wrinkle. Eh, you look horrific enough anyway. Blue Murder. A fan of over-the-top cop movie heroes such as McKay, McLean and Riggs, Blue is disappointed to find that she died rather easily when shot with a lethal weapon. Or several, considering how the circumstances by which we found her. Daydreamer. It doesn't pay for an anesthetist to be distracted when preparing chloroform, as Daydreamer found out during his heart attack. When the Sandman sleeps, it takes, a particularly, it takes a particularly loud noise to wake him. To the lower floor, shall we? He says as his accent proceeds to kick into full gear, knowing full well he doesn't have one. Wave Master. The multitudinous life forms that crawl and proliferate upon land are mere echoes of the legacy of Wave Master's kind. Rain Dancer. 
Rain Dancer enjoys playing with mortals by dressing in rainbows and leading them on fruitless quests for gold. Bloody leprechaun. Carter. Another ghost we haven't seen. There's a lot we haven't seen. What are your powers? Dance Macabre, Frozen Stiff, Phobia, Dominate, Fright and Bitter Cold. Interesting. Hang on, hang on. Epitaph. Old Man Carter is a compulsive teller of tales of his life, of the determination and business acumen that led him from the gutter to glory. He, may expect, he can expect to be respected but avoided by other ghosts. Fitting that we're getting closer and closer to winter with that type of story. Ghastly. Everyone in the Astral Realm knows Ghastly. The spectre was haunting when you were not even disturbance in the raw plasm. I've only seen you a few times. What's your ultimate? Dance Macabre. Okay. Knuckles. Mobster ghosts aren't exactly rare, but Knuckles presents a level of professionalism that's a cut above the rest. He doesn't put a severed horse's head in an enemy's bed. He uses his own. Interesting. Where to next? I think we'll save the Darkling for last. Moonscream. Professional haunters pride themselves on the reserve and impartiality, but Moonscream's truly is fair in all things. Admittedly, this is because she hates all things with equal passion, but full marks for effort all the same. Ah, the spirit of the internet indeed. Weather Witch. As owners come to resemble their pets, so do witches come to resemble their spells. Specializing in weather control, this unhinged bansi banshee soon became controlled by the weather, and now her mood swings are as temperamental as the skies. Bridget. For half her life, Bridget cared only to be married. Jilted at the altar by her lecherous fiancé, she spent the rest of her life stoking her hatred for womanizing men. Her self-appointed role as a ghost is not hard to guess. Shivers. Always in the running for MVP, most valuable phantom, Shivers tends to be as uneasy around mortals as they are around him. Scared to death, paralyzed, or reading. You would probably make a lot better if I just invested some more cash into you. Oh well, I mean I've got 15,000 gold plasm, excellent to just retire on. The Painter. If genius and insanity are two sides of the same canvas, it's a mercy that the painter never created a self-portrait. People didn't want to hang his paintings, so the painter hung himself. Meh. Nothing fancy. Fingers. Fingers always imagined life to be like music, with death as the end of the song. He was pleasantly surprised, therefore, to find that his death is in fact a coda. Whirlweird. Three times winner of Poltergeist of the Year, Whirlweird is still best known for his debuted professional haunting, the seminal and very messy Pollux Paint Store Mystery. Hard Boiled. Never underestimate the malevolence of chickens. This distalt entity's long term goal is to revenge itself on the mysterious mortal known only as the Colonel. Hogwash. Frequent flooding gave this groundhog his love of body surfing, but an errant speedboat robbed him of his life. He enjoyed putting he enjoys putting machines out of action. Cog jammer. This organ grinder's monkey was unlucky enough to be ground by his own organ. Now a respected gremlin, Cog Jammer is as wild in death as he was docile in life. Lucky. Lucky found that frat boys are a useful source of food, and so decided to become an alpha tau. Sadly, their electrical repair skills were wanting, leading to Lucky's electrocution by their warm but malfunctioning pinball table. Boo. They say spooks never grow up, and this feisty scamp is the proof. His party tricks include introducing himself to geese and sneaking into mortals to haunt them from the inside out. Disturbing, if I say the least. Also, I could swear... Actually, wait. Is he giving you the finger? I mean, he only has three fingers to begin with, but it seems like whenever he does the devil's horns or attempts to, it looks like he's giving you the finger. <sighs> Quiver. 
Quiver is terrified of anything and everything, including itself, but in the same way that it takes a thief to catch a thief, sometimes it takes the scared to scare. Wendell. As might be expected of a ghost who considers teen comedy movies to be an art, Wendell intends to have some fun with his newfound intangibility. Storm Talon. Prince of Elementals, Storm Talon is as glorious to mortals as they are banal to him. He is scorned for their petty attempts to emulate his power and fights progress whenever it rears its ugly head. Huh. I believe you'll be very useful when dealing with that ether bomb. Blair Wisp. Oh my god, of course they have to do the close up. Wisps experience pleasurable sensation when cased upon by mortals, and are such a very hard to sneak up on. They can, however, be incapacitated by a really hard stare. What are your powers? Huh. So you're just really useful. I don't know why you don't have much use on other missions. Except for the fact that most of them are indoors. Eh. Dragoon. During the time of the Civil War, a mercenary dragoon ravaged the area. Killed by a band of farmers, they blew off his head with a musket. Right, you can get great balls of fire. I forgot that was one of your spell, one of your uh, powers. Ah. <laughs> Wait. I'm going to have to take a look at you after taking one last look at the Darkling. Windwalker. Windwalker's frosty attentions are guaranteed to make the hairs on the back of, mortal, of a mortal's neck stand on end, freeze, then break right off. Whiskerjack. Stories have been told of Whiskerjack for as long as stories have been told. He once sold an ocean to a vain prince, including a three-year warranty against fire and theft. Harriet. Harriet is a puka, that rare form of spirit which is a genuine love of mortals. She is vaguely confused as to why her friends tend to end up in white padded rooms, but doesn't let it bother her. Scarecrow. There is a strength in numbers. Here, a murder of crows gathers to take revenge upon its persecutors, assuming the face of its ultimate terror to do so. Is there? Oh. That makes me sad. What they should have done is they should have put a little crow model, like the head at least, inside the jaws of Scarecrow, as that would be very, very fitting, in my personal opinion. A personal professional opinion. Arclight. He what came to fix the boiler, but he never left. His flickering light brings as much terror to mortals now as his exorbitant call-out fees did whenever he was alive. Flash Jordan. This reporter's single-minded quest for the Pulitzer Prize led to her obsessive investigation of a certain mob boss. She was increasing his paranoia quite effectively, until a poor choice of hiding place led to her accidental cremation. Black Crow Death is what you make it. Black Crow, still filled with sorrow at the murder of his people and the misuse of the land by the invaders from across the sea, continues to walk a trail of tears. Stonewall the grading of tectonic plates, the slow erosion of mountains, and the inexorable compression of carbon matter conspired to form this inestimably patient spirit. Bonsai. The spirit of Bonsai has been nurtured for centuries by generations of Japanese gardeners. He is a philosophical elemental, undaunted by the tasks of any size. Whisperwind. Unlike many elementals, Whisperwind is a subtle spirit, forgoing ostentatious shows of power in favor of minor flights of fancy and small acts of mischief. Aether. 
A being of air cannot sing, but rather becomes the song itself. Aether has inhabited music for hundreds of years, and is a popular spirit at parties. Alright, finally onto the murderous ones. Oh, fiery ones first. Sparkle. Like most fire elementals, Sparkle has an insatiable appetite. He traveled extensively in his youth and has fond memories of London due to his participation in the Pudding Lane Buffet of 1666. Firetail. Salamanders are inscrutable spirits which tend to treat all entities as equals beneath them, mortals included, but even the most unflappable spirit can be frustrated by bad manners. Darkling. A creature formed from the sticky darkness that gathers in the forgotten corners of the human soul. The Darkling has been trapped in the netherworld for centuries, and now only knows hunger. You don't have all powers. Okay, so I was actually curious because I didn't thought the Dragoon... I had mistaken the Darkling for simply having all possible powers. And with that, I would have been very happy to note that I could just power up the Dragoon to be a little bit stronger than the Darkling. Speaking of which, considering the next mission, I think Hidden Maze would be hilarious. And then Frostbite, perhaps. And then finally, I'm, I'm just giving the Darkling all possible powers, considering what the next mission is. But that is all possible powers. Well, not all possible powers. That is all possible entities, and I don't believe I've missed any. As such, I will say that that is now currently the end to this little bonus video. When we come back, we will finish off the game in its totality. This has been BrainBoy20 with Let's Replay Ghostmaster, and I'm signing off. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment, or subscribe, that helps a great deal. And I hope to see you all next time. Until then, happy hauntings.